have any idea how to get in there without being noticed. Let's take a look around the building. We might find a less conspicuous entrance. Where is the manifest to be found? I've already been to the port authorities. They keep the official documents upstairs. Here's the ship's manifest. We only need to add our merchandise to the list. to keep your mark hidden from them, they might let us in, unless we just offered them a drink. These sailors rarely refuse one. I see where this is headed. If we drop a little soporific in their glasses, the way will be clear. I'll just need to find the proper ingredients, but it's doable. is off limits. Move along. Can't you make an exception? No. Sorry, sir. Move along, please. Now. Very well. I'm going. Orders haven't changed, you know. No one passes. Very well. I'm going. Pass. Only the Norts have access to the prison.
I've seen a few escapes in my time. Are you the smuggler? You snuck yourself in here just to ask me that question. If this is some sort of trick to get me to admit to some crime, you are truly twisted. You can see for yourself that I'm no Nord. Come now. Are you the one I'm looking for? I'm already locked up. What more do I risk? Yes, I am a smuggler. <laughs> but I'm not the only one in this city. I'm searching for a couple fleeing to Leme. They're trying to leave the city discreetly. Have they contacted you? You certainly can't imagine I'm going to answer you without getting something in exchange. I don't really think of my clients as kin, but I'd never betray any of them for free. A real saint you are. How about your freedom in exchange for your loyalty? Tell me where I can find them and I'll open this cage. That works for me. Your two telemites are hidden in a warehouse behind this very prison. They must be waiting for me. But you might want to be quick about it. If the Norts get their hands on them, they'll find themselves in this same cage. Thank you. Anytime. And these doors? You're gonna open them, right? Thank you, my lord. Don't worry about me. I'll slip outside without being seen.
Orders haven't changed, you know. Very well. I'm going. We've been found. I told you that the smuggler was not worthy of our trust. The man to which you are referring was arrested and thrown into prison, but revealed to me your hiding place. Oh, the traitor! Have you come to deliver us to the Inquisition, then? Please, please, have pity on our souls. We have committed no crime. We are not heretics. We are nothing more than historians. In that case, why is the ambassador of Teleme so concerned about your teachings? Why is the Inquisition looking for you, and why are you hiding? Our only error was wanting to publish our work. It's true. We presented our research, but it didn't please the censor. And here you have the result. We fled all the way to Serene, thinking we would be safe. But the Inquisition wants to silence us so badly that they followed us here. Tell me more about your research. What about it is so horrifying that it would provoke such a fuss? Our work concerned the teachings of St. Lucius. The disciple of St. Matthias. The one who returned to Teleme after traveling with his master. The very same. His writing was carefully preserved, but never seriously studied. With the discovery of Tirfredi, we thought it crucial to take a look at the original text. We wanted to verify if this island could have been the faraway place that he spoke of. The Eden of St. Matthias. And? What did you find? Teofredi is without any doubt the land that our St. Matthias and his disciples went to. But the text that we discovered was radically different from what we expected to find. In the original text, St. Lucius doesn't speak of an Eden, of the paradise of the Illuminated. He speaks of a voice that came from the depths of the earth, which convinced St. Matthias to stay there. It was written in black and white, and there is no doubt about it. The original was written in Lucius's own hand. I understand now what that text has cost you. This voice from the depths sounds more the power of a demon than a saint. The sacred texts are always difficult to interpret, but what is written, is written. Tell me more about your research. What about it is so horrifying that it would provoke such a fuss? Our work concerned the teachings of St. Lucius. The disciple of St. Matthias. The very same. With the dis we wanted to ver- And? Teofredi. But in the original, he speaks of- It was written- I understand this voice- The sacred- did you try speaking with the senses? You could forget what you have discovered, perhaps. Oh, we have signed already an abjugation stating that we misunderstood the sacred texts of St. Lucius. We were even ready to say that we had never seen the true text or anything else that would have pleased them. It served no purpose. It's our lives they are after. Who were you hoping would give you asylum? We were hoping to reach Al Saad. The Inquisition won't chase us into the den of their enemies. 
Our research won't interest the Bridge Alliance, or at least I doubt it. But at least we'll be safe. By entering Al Saad as clandestines, you risk being taken for spies. That would be better than being burned at the stake. I see. Well, you have no other choice but to run and seek refuge in enemy territories. I beg of you, please do not deliver us to them. Let us continue on this path. I am sorry for you. But I must arrest you and hand you over to the Ambassador of Teleme. We might be two poor historians, but we will not surrender ourselves to the fire without a fight. To my help! And death to the others! I understand them. Better to die weapon in hand than on a flaming pyre. Now let's go and inform the Cardinal that their heretics are dead. Good day, Excellency. Sir de Sade, to what do I owe the pleasure? I was able to find the heretics you seek. Alas, they preferred death to capture. What a pity. But that hardly surprises me. What have you done with their bodies, my son? I left them in the Nort warehouses. I'm certain they would be more than happy to return them to you. Very well. Very well. You have done a great favor to our nation, and we shall not forget it. And I would appreciate it if you would accept this modest gift as thanks. I must be going. Farewell, Excellency. May the light guide you. De Sade. Whatever you... 
Welcome! It's such a pleasure to see you. Have you seen anything? Thank you for your visit. See you soon.
Orders haven't changed, you know. No one passes. Looks like you've been here for quite a spell, and not much is going on. How about a little drink? It might help kill some time while waiting for the change of guard. Maybe just a drop. I have been starting to get a little thirsty. Cheers. The path is clear. We should notify the men. They need all the time they can get. Captain, sir, we were given orders to wait here with the merchandise. The way is clear. It's time to get going. Do your best to be quick and quiet about it. You won't have much time to move it. Don't you be worrying now. We're off. The warehouse is at the end to the right there. You can't miss it. Move out. Quick steps. So you're back. Right then. What about our business? We can guarantee that your merchandise will leave with us. <sighs> Thank you, Your Excellency. And bravo, Kurt. The commander will be most pleased. The cargo shall make the voyage. But who will be at its reception once it's arrived? That shall be your next mission. Once you've reached New Serene, go and find the Quartermaster. He will give you new instructions. Until then. I wish you a safe and pleasant voyage, Your Excellency. Kurt, good luck. So you're back. Right then. We the car that's evil until.
So you're back. Right then. What about our business? We can guarantee that your merchandise will leave with us. <sighs> Thank you, Your Excellency. And bravo, Kurt. The commander will be most pleased. The cargo shall make the voyage. But who will be at its reception once it's arrived? That shall be your next mission. Once you've reached New Serene, go and find the Quartermaster. He will give you new instructions. Until then, I wish you a safe and pleasant voyage, Your Excellency. Kurt, good luck. Welcome! It's such a have you Thank you for your visit. See you soon. Welcome! It's such a pleasure to see you again. Have you seen anything? So, are you ready? Can we weigh anchor? We should be able to set sail with the tide, as agreed upon. I'm still without news of my cabin boy, but we will have to do without. Does the boy know anyone in Serene? Other than fellow Norts, you mean? I don't think so, but it's difficult to be sure. When did you see your cabin boy for the last time? It's been two days since I've had any news at all. It wasn't out of the ordinary until this morning. My men have free shore leave when we're at dock. But the day of departure, every able-bodied sailor must be present on the ship. This Jonas, does he have any close friends amongst the crew? In tradition, we are all members of the same family. But yes, there would be Flavio and Laura. Might I have a word with them? As you wish. You'll find them over there, in port. Be back soon, Captain.
Good day. Someone told me that you're a friend of Jonas's, the young cabin boy who's gone missing. That's right, yeah. Are you looking for him? Yes. Your captain asked me to go and find him. Happy to hear he's taken the disappearance seriously. What can I do for you? What does Jonas do in his free time, when you're on land? He just hangs around here or there. You know the cabin boys don't have half a sailor's wages. And when evening comes, we usually go down the tavern with good old Lauro. Did he ever have one too many? Never. He sips his pint like it was bad medicine. One drink lasts him the whole night. When did you last see him? Two days ago, in the evening. We went to have a drink in the tavern. Jonas, Lauro, and myself. Did anything seem out of the ordinary? Was he troubled? Maybe a tad troubled. Like he was somewhere else. Why would that be? Give me your best guess. Boy, I haven't the faintest idea. Do you think he could have made himself any enemies? I wouldn't think that for a moment. Jonas has a good heart, and he steers clear of trouble and troublemakers. Do you think he could have made himself any enemies? I wouldn't think that for a moment. Jonas has a good heart, and he steers clear of trouble and troublemakers. When did you last see him? Two days ago, in the evening. We went to have a drink in the tavern. Jonas, Lauro, and myself. Did anything seem out of the ordinary? Was he troubled? Maybe a tad troubled. Like he was somewhere else. Why would that be? Give me your best guess. Boy, I haven't the faintest idea. What do you think about Captain Vasco? He's a damn good navigator, and an excellent leader of men. He knows his craft well, in spite of being so young. How old is he? He's not seen his 25th year yet. If he keeps it up, he'll be an admiral one day. I need to be going. Farewell. Day, sailor. I've been told that you know the missing cabin boy well. Is that right? You talking about Jonas? You bet your stars I know him. But like I've been crying to the nine death winds. He didn't go missing, he was taken. Why would anyone want to snatch a mere cabin boy? How would I know? Jonas is a gentle boy who keeps his head down. <sighs> you think my story is nothing but mess too, don't you? It's just that I can't imagine a gang of thugs hoping to get a ransom for a cabin boy. Were you a witness to the event? Yes, I was. 
Even though I'd had a few tumblers in the belly, I hadn't yet lost my head. The other day, in the tavern, I saw him talking to a well-dressed man, surrounded by some other sly ruffians. And then when we left, him and I, Flavia left a little earlier, you understand? Well, those brutes were there, waiting for him. They just up and took him like that. Grabbed his arms and puff. Gone. Vanished. Why didn't you intervene? <sighs> I tried to, believe me. But my legs betrayed me. Wavering they were. And I fell into the gutter. Did you report this to the captain? Unfortunately not. I know all too well what weight my words carry. Even Flavia treated me like a drunken fool. And the captain? No. Not telling him that. I still have some pride left. You get me? Thank you, Lara. I need to be going. Hello again. Well, now, did you find him? No, but I'm not giving up hope. What do you think about Captain Vasco? He's a just man, who knows his knots. He's well appreciated by the crew. It's a pity that he hasn't much heart for lass now and again. Always seems unhappy, our captain. Did Jonas seem troubled to you, the night he disappeared? Maybe. For sure he wasn't his usual self. Do you know what was on his mind? No. No idea. Did anyone else see the kidnapping? There was still a small crowd in the tavern. B but outside, I seem to recall that regular being there. We play cards with him from time to time. Kind of fellow who plays from morning to night time to be that skilled. But now and again he comes out. When nature calls, you know. I kind of remember his face being there. Thank you, Lara. I need to be going. Could I trouble you again? Have you found Jonas? Not yet, but I haven't given up. About that. Does he know anyone in Serene? No one, far as I know. I don't know where to start with this. Do you have any idea? No. Lauro won't stop telling anyone who will lend him an ear that the boy was carried off by thugs. And you don't believe him? I like Lauro, don't get me wrong, he's like a brother. But to be honest, he drinks a little more than he should. The itch for a drink gets us all, but to him more than others, and when you drink too much, the imagination wanders. Here, yesterday, it was me who tied one over, and I thought I heard Jonas's voice by the canal. I called back to him. As you'd guess, but they're nothing. Drink. It blurs the senses. I need to be going. Farewell. Strange story, this is. Something isn't right here, I can feel it. We need to lift a veil on this. Go home. The Malachor is slowly killing our city. There are some days when you'd rather get drunk all day than have to suffer through this again. Tavern keeper. I see you're back. Can I pour you something this time?
I'm looking for a nought. A young cabin boy who's been missing roll call for two days now. A nought, you say? That's not a lot to go on. There are quite a few that come to my tavern. According to one of his fellows, he would have been taken right here. A kidnapping? In my establishment? You surely jest. At least I hope you do. I would have noticed. That doesn't hold water. Someone told me about one of your faithful clients. A big gambler, it would seem. I see. An able-bodied man. Passes his time lightening the pouches of sailors coming through. Where might I find him at this time? Here. He would never give away his chair at his table. Anything else? With all these sailors coming and going, you must have heard some stories about Tear for D. Right. Even stories that my heaviest drinkers would have trouble believing. They say that man trees live there. Dragons and gigantic creatures. Treasure abounds under every rock. And the source of eternal life is hidden somewhere there. <laughs> Last night, some noughts even told me they brought back one of those giant beasts into the port. Ah, but you know the kind. If you ask my opinion, the drink was fueling their imaginations. How is business going these days? It's picking up. We've not seen many new customers, but of late, things are looking better. The Malachor and the neighboring walls have dampened commerce. The epidemic still rages, but the possibility of finding a cure on that island has given people something to hope for. Now that we have a city there, quite a few seafarers come by to spend their wages. I need to be off. Farewell. Goodbye. Who are you? I don't recognize you. Am I in your debt? No. Have no fear about that. It's for a different reason that I am here. I'm looking for a nought that disappeared two days ago, after visiting this establishment. A young cabin boy. Two members of his crew accompanied him. Yes, that does ring a bell. I've played with the three of them. 